At the pinnacle of the financial pyramid stands the wealthiest individual on Earth, Elon Musk, the mind behind Tesla, the creator of PayPal, the individual who talks to rockets and whose mission it is to settle Mars and make humans a multi-planetary species. Yet, the sparkle of his achievements isn't free from allegations and disputes. So today, we delve into the dark corners of his empire, the accusations, the scandals, and purported fraud, and explore the shadows that accompany the name Elon Musk. As the eldest child of a South African father and a Canadian mother, Elon faced a significant life change at the tender age of nine when his parents split, opting to reside with his father while his siblings stayed with his mother, a decision he later admitted was not a good idea. His father, Errol, was an engineer and gained the title of the youngest person to achieve a professional engineer's qualification in South Africa. He ventured into emerald mining, and their wealth was so immense at one point that their safe couldn't close. However, as Elon would come to understand, money doesn't guarantee happiness. Reflecting on his father's character, Elon remarked, You have no idea how bad. Almost every crime you can possibly think of, he has done. Almost every evil thing you could possibly think of, he has done. However, his dad had rather positive feelings about him. According to his dad, he would read books even at parties. Teaching himself programming, he managed to create a game at the age of 12, selling it to a company for $500. During his school days, he faced bullying from his classmates, enduring severe beatings that even led to hospitalization after he blacked out. His childhood was challenging, as other kids constantly picked on him due to his differences. But he still managed to maintain the reputation of a bright and special student, in South Africa, there is compulsory military service for every man when they hit 18. To escape that and follow his dreams, Elon Musk headed to Canada to stay with his mother's family after finishing high school at the age of 17. Times were tough financially back then for Elon and his family in Canada. He took up low-paying jobs to make ends meet. Eventually, he earned a scholarship to the University of Pennsylvania in the United States majoring in physics and economics, earning two bachelor's degrees. Musk viewed the Ivy League school as a potential pathway to more opportunities and embarked on the journey to pursue two degrees. First, an economics degree from the Wharton School, followed by a bachelor's degree in physics. College became a transformative period for Musk, surpassing the ambitions he held in high school. He engaged in public speaking contests and exhibited the same level of intensity and competitiveness that defines his demeanor today. Then, he secured a spot for a prestigious PhD program in applied physics at Stanford University, but he dropped out after just two days. His strong entrepreneurial spirit called him to Silicon Valley, and he was determined to succeed. He, along with his brother, Kimball Musk, borrowed $28,000 from their dad and started a company called Zip2. It was a company that made and sold online city guide software to newspapers. The Musk brothers worked hard, and they even slept in their office and used the local YMCA for showers to build Zip2. And fortunately, their struggle paid off. In February 1999, during the dot-com boom, they sold the company for over $300 million to Compaq, the computing firm. From that point on, Musk never looked back. He turned his share of the money into a company that eventually became PayPal. Later, he earned around $160 million when eBay purchased the payments company for $1.5 billion in 2002. But if you're curious to know more about PayPal and how Musk linked up with Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, check out our video on it. The link is in the description. Now back to Musk's story. This is where his success journey really kicked off. Some would sip pina coladas on the beach and enjoy the easy life, but not Elon. While he did procure a McLaren and a private jet, he has never been afraid to put his money where his mouth is and make risky moves. Musk shifted his focus to exploring space. In 2002, he started SpaceX, wanting to make space travel something anyone could do. 
SpaceX has done many successful missions, even sending astronauts to the International Space Station. Alongside SpaceX, Musk started Tesla in 2003, wanting to change how cars work with electric vehicles. Tesla is now a top player in the electric car market and has even come up with self-driving technology. Back then, electric cars were seen as slow and not very appealing, but Tesla wanted to change that. At the start, the journey was bumpy. Cars were pricey, and shows like Top Gear weren't kind to the brand. Yet Elon Musk faced the challenges head on. He navigated carefully and made daring choices, even parting ways with some staff, including the co-founder to carry on his journey. By actively getting involved in the company's innovation and decision-making, he turned the company into a giant in the car industry. If you hear the words electric car nowadays, chances are you're thinking of a Tesla, as it seems to have no real competition. This is because of the extravagant features the car has. It's quiet, no shaking, and runs cleaner. With instant torque and rapid acceleration, it's incredibly fast. The handling beats your typical car, or even some sports cars, thanks to its super low center of gravity, thanks to the unique battery weight distribution. Both Tesla's Model S and Model X earned a 5-star rating in every category, a feat only achieved by 1% of cars. In the US, you can travel anywhere, charging up at Tesla supercharger stations along the way, not even having to think about where to charge because your Tesla will guide you on the most efficient route. And lastly, the Tesla Roadster can go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 1.9 seconds. Tesla is now dominating the electric car market without any opposition. Similarly, with SpaceX, it had a rough start. It took a whopping 16 months for SpaceX to show that landing a rocket on one of the recovery drone ships was possible. The first try was surprisingly accurate, shocking most experts. Progress was slow, and many still questioned the company's legitimacy. However, in mid-2016, SpaceX successfully landed three rockets in a row. Unfortunately, disaster struck later that same year when they attempted to replicate this achievement four times instead of three. It was a huge setback for Musk and SpaceX, and the media covered the story quite ruthlessly. While it was expected that SpaceX might slow down after this setback, Musk insisted on moving forward and making good use of the valuable data gathered during this failure. In 2023, Elon Musk's SpaceX broke its previous annual record for orbital rocket launches, achieving 96 successful missions at an impressive average launch pace of one every four days. SpaceX completed 91 launches with its Falcon 9 rocket and five with the Falcon Heavy, surpassing its previous annual record of 61 orbital launches in 2022. Elon Musk, who taught himself programming at the age of 12, also mastered rocket science. In an interview, he made it clear he never gives up, and surely he hasn't. However, facing the upcoming mountain of challenges won't be an easy task. Elon Musk found himself in a bind with the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, in both 2018 and 2019. This predicament arose after he tweeted in August claiming he had a deal to take Tesla private. Musk and Tesla's lawyers claim that the SEC conducted a relentless investigation targeting both him and Tesla. They argue that the SEC is essentially infringing on Musk's First Amendment rights to free speech. These accusations were outlined in a letter sent by Musk's attorney, filed in the Federal District Court in Manhattan. The letter alleges that the SEC is disregarding the court's order by withholding $40 million in settlement funds from Tesla's shareholders, funds that Musk and Tesla paid as penalties for Musk's 2018 tweet claiming he had secured funds to take Tesla private. This tweet is just one in a series of tweets about Tesla that has led Musk to clash with the SEC for several years, dating back to 2018. In 2019, the SEC requested the judge to hold Musk in contempt for another tweet, where Musk made claims about Tesla's production outlook that the company couldn't or hadn't backed up at the time. Additionally, in a filing on November 16, 2021, it was revealed that the SEC had issued another subpoena to Musk and Tesla, seeking compliance information related to the 2018 settlement. 
This came just 10 days after Musk had tweeted about potentially selling 10% of his stake in the company. Musk has been an outspoken and prominent supporter of Dogecoin. His frequent tweets about the cryptocurrency, even the most eccentric ones, can cause significant movements in Dogecoin's value. This was evident in April 2021, when Musk tweeted Doge barking at the moon along with a picture of a painting by Spanish artist Joan Miro titled Dog Barking at the Moon. He joked about Dogecoin on Saturday Night Live, first during his opening monologue when his mom made a cameo. May Musk appeared. I'm excited for my Mother's Day gift, May said. I just hope it's not Dogecoin. Elon Musk jokingly said, It sure is. Then, during Weekend Update, he poked fun at the coin while playing a fake financial expert and referring to Dogecoin as a hustle struggling to explain its utility at first, stating it was the future of currency that would take over the world. When Michael Shea responds, So it's a hustle? He chuckled and replied, Yeah, it's a hustle. Despite Musk hyping up the cryptocurrency's value leading up to his SNL appearance, investors quickly sold off Dogecoin, creating a sharp 40% drop reaching as low as 44 cents after the episode. Cryptocurrencies are well known for their volatility, and Dogecoin continued to see significant fluctuations in 2021 and hit lows of 7 cents in 2024. This is why Johnson accused Musk and aimed to get $86 billion in damages, reflecting the drop in Dogecoin's market value since May 2021, and he wanted that tripled. He also sought to stop Musk and his companies from promoting Dogecoin and urged a judge to declare that trading Dogecoin is gambling under federal and New York law. However, in March 2023, Elon Musk requested a U.S. judge to dismiss a $258 billion racketeering lawsuit against him. The lawsuit accused him of running a pyramid scheme to support the cryptocurrency Dogecoin. The lawyers of Musk argued that the investors never clarified how he planned to defraud anyone or what risks he concealed. They contended that Musk's statements like Dogecoin rules and no highs, no lows, only Doge were too unclear to back a fraud claim. In a footnote, the lawyers also dismissed the investor's assertion that Dogecoin qualified as a security. After months of uncertainty, legal battles, heated arguments, and a close call with a full-blown trial, Elon Musk, in the meantime, did something that shook the entire world. He bought Twitter. After months of legal twists, Elon Musk successfully acquired Twitter in a $44 billion deal. Musk's interest in the social network had its roots in his prolific Twitter use. He spent nearly $3 billion to accumulate a 9.2% stake in Twitter, raising concerns of a hostile takeover. While initially offered a board seat, Musk sought ownership and made an offer for the entire company at $54.20 per share. His publicized plans included loosening moderation rules, open sourcing recommendation algorithms, and purging bots and scammers. Internal tensions grew as Musk clashed with Twitter's leadership. Musk secured financing and Twitter's board eventually accepted the deal. Musk, driven by his disdain for bots, demanded detailed data on Twitter's bot situation, temporarily putting the deal on hold. After legal battles and Musk accusing Twitter of deception, the deal was finalized. And Musk showed no regret. He exclaimed, forget Zuck! as he confidently signed the papers, issuing a bold challenge to Meta's Mark Zuckerberg, now his direct rival in the competitive world of social media. The 12 months that followed were filled with scandals, but one consistent pattern emerged. Musk said one thing and did the exact opposite. Before taking over Twitter, Musk expressed a desire to let all legal speech remain on the platform. However, by December 2022, he had suspended at least nine prominent journalists from the platform for retweeting or publicizing Elon Jet's tweets about the location of his private jet. The platform later changed its mind about those decisions. However, there were still some more U-turns to go. In late December 2022, Musk conducted a Twitter poll asking if he should step down as the head of Twitter. With more than 17.5 million votes cast, 
Yes, one with a tally of 57.5%. However, still today, Musk has yet to step down. Musk has also revamped Twitter's verification program, where the blue checkmark used to signal that a public figure's account was genuinely owned by who it claimed to be. Musk replaced that invite-only system with Twitter Blue, an $8 per month subscription available to anyone. The billionaire claimed the change was essential to defeat spam. However, soon after, some users started paying for verification to impersonate the accounts of famous brands. A fake but verified account pretending to be the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly tweeted, We are excited to announce insulin is free now, prompting the company to clarify that this was not true. Brands that had invested heavily in advertising on Twitter began leaving the platform, worried about the risk of impersonation. Musk also faced criticism from media organizations like NPR, PBS, and the BBC for adding state-funded media labels to their accounts without warning. The organizations argued that the labels were deceptive, implying a lack of editorial independence from the government and suggesting complete reliance on government funds despite their commercial activities. NPR decided to leave the platform due to these labels. Musk later changed his stance, taking off the labels. In the process, he also removed similar labels from Russian state propaganda outlet RT and China Daily, affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party. Despite the initial backlash and the subsequent removal of these labels, Musk's decisions on platform governance have invited further scrutiny. Notably, he has faced additional criticism for bringing back certain individuals' accounts on Twitter. Elon Musk has brought back Donald Trump's account on Twitter almost two years after the former U.S. president was barred from the social media platform for encouraging violence. Trump's account returned to Twitter after Musk conducted a poll on the site that indicated marginal support for allowing Trump's comeback. Over 15 million people participated in the poll, voting on whether Trump's account should be reinstated. A narrow majority of 51.8% voted in favor. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones has also made a return to Twitter. Jones is widely known for falsely asserting that the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting was staged. He was ordered to pay $1.5 billion in damages to the victims' families, as courts determined that his false claims led to harassment and death threats against them. Jones, the founder of the conspiracy theory website InfoWars, has been removed from other major platforms, including YouTube and Facebook. He was banned from Twitter in 2018 for violating the site's rules on abusive behavior. Elon Musk also reinstated Andrew Tate's Twitter account. He was previously banned from the site and later had his account reinstated last year, is currently facing accusations of rape, human trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit women, which he denies. As Musk faces heightened criticism from journalists for reinstating controversial figures on his platforms, his evolving stance on free speech online has come under increased scrutiny. Leading X, the new name of Twitter, Musk has become more outspoken, particularly in response to big advertisers who boycotted the platform over concerns about anti-Semitic content, including a post by Musk himself. Accusing advertisers of attempting to blackmail him, Musk's perspective on the delicate balance between free expression and platform responsibility is becoming increasingly central to the ongoing discourse surrounding online content moderation. However, Andrew Tate offered to give Elon Musk $1 million per month after major companies halted their ad campaigns on X. Yet, it's not nearly enough to assist him. But the question comes to mind that on one end, Musk advocates for freedom of speech, while on another front, he bans journalists. What is Musk really doing? Does he care about freedom of speech, or does he just want to promote himself? Twitter has suspended several high-profile journalists who cover the platform and its CEO, Elon Musk. This is a private company. You can do whatever he wants. You know, there's all this talk about free speech. He's called himself a free speech absolutist. In December 2022, Musk suddenly suspended several journalists' accounts without providing any explanation. Later investigations revealed that these writers had either reported on Musk's suspension of Twitter accounts, sharing private plane locations, criticized Musk in the past, or both. This led to conflicts between Musk and journalists like Barry Weiss, 
who Musk had considered an ally until then and had chosen as one of three reporters for the Twitter files. Musk's actions showed a growing tendency to selectively enforce Twitter's rules based on his political or personal preferences. Tweets related to Ukraine were downplayed on the platform, and posts containing certain words like transgender, trans, gay, and bisexual seemed to be hidden, even in direct messages. Posts discussing the Trans Day of Vengeance were mass-deleted due to unclear and inconsistently applied rules about incitements to violence. Meanwhile, Musk's own tweets were prioritized and prominently displayed on users' timelines regardless of whether they followed him. Musk's selective use of Twitter's rules and algorithms practically guarantees that his preferences will dominate the platform, regardless of whether they support a culture of free expression. Consequently, what may have seemed like a promising new start in October 2022 now appears to be little more than a different version of the same old culture war mess perhaps with even worse global free speech policies. In an unprecedented move, Twitter restricted access to two tweets by Indian journalist Saurav Das, citing a legal demand from the Indian government. This restriction applied not just in India, as Twitter's previous policy would have dictated, but globally. This means that regardless of whether people lived in a country with free speech protections or not, they couldn't see what Das had to say. Musk's understanding of the complexities of local censorship laws was already questionable. Still, for someone claiming to be a free speech absolutist, it's unsettling to allow a country to impose its speech restrictions on a global scale. These moves, along with X's recent reluctance to be transparent about other government takedown requests, unfortunately fall short of promoting a culture of free speech online. Since Elon Musk took over Twitter, the platform has followed through on over 80% of government and court requests to modify or remove content. This is a significant increase from the approximately 50% compliance rate before Musk's acquisition, as reported by the technology publication Rest of World. Interestingly, this shift raises questions about Musk's prior assurances to curtail political censorship on the platform. Despite the notion of X being a digital town square, some would say it's akin to Elon Musk's house party. He has the freedom to run it as he pleases, and we're only invited if, and only for as long as, he approves. So what do you think, guys? Do you think it's truly a free place for open conversation? Or is Elon primarily using the platform for self-promotion? Let us know in the comments below. Did you enjoy this content? If you like learning the origin stories of big names, check out one of our other videos like these.